Hello friends, this is Kindred and today I am bringing you a video which might help you out, especially if you are a new player for Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel. So, basically we are going to cover the basic fundamentals for this game, which will help you good, not only in time trial, but also for online. So that means we will start from power sliding, turbo boosting, to ultra turning, usage of items, basics of wall hugging, corner cutting, etc. Alright, so first let's tackle what driving style to pick. So the game has 5 driving styles to choose from, which are speed, drift, acceleration, balance, and turn. And then each of those driving styles have a corresponding stat to speed, acceleration, and turn. And of course, by their names, speed driving style has the fastest speed, acceleration driving style has the fastest, has the best acceleration, and then turn driving style has the best turn. How about drift and balance then? Well, drift is the second fastest behind speed, and it has a little bit of better turning stat. And then balanced, balance as being shown on the screen of CTRNF has an all-around stat, but in fact, it is slower than acceleration so take note of that okay okay so for beginners i recommend picking the driving style according to the track which you will be racing on so for example you will be racing on wide tracks such as coco park or inferno island then i recommend picking speed or drift meanwhile if you are racing on tracks which requires precise timing when it comes to turning i recommend picking axle balance or turn so it goes for tracks such as Papo's Pyramid, or Tiny Arena, or even Hatter Skyway. But then again, for blue fire tracks, blue fire tracks such as Oxide Station, Hatter Skyway, Engine Labs, it might feel easier for you to pick balance and turn. If they feel too slow for you, then adjust to Axel, okay? But if you prefer to have if you, if you prefer to stick to a single driving style, which is good all around, then I recommend acceleration. So, if you feel that axle is, is slower or if you are starting to feel confident with your skills, then from axle go to drift, and then from drift go to speed. But if acceleration is too hard to handle for you, then from Axel, go to balance, and then if you're still having difficulty with balance, then use turn. That is if you just want something, if you just want to stick to a single driving style, okay? Alright, next let's talk about power sliding. So power sliding is done while holding the acceleration button and then pressing and holding the jump button while still steering to the left or right. So basically once you see there are marks being left behind by your tires as shown in the lower right photo on my slide then you are successful in power sliding then each driving style has varying radial curve while power sliding consider power sliding towards where the character is facing this is where the turn stat comes in the higher the turn stat the easier your cart will be able to power slide through a tight curve or turn so the best example for this is when you race in cortex castle you will find racing in Cortex Castle five times easier with Axel, Turn, and Balance. Whereas when, when you use Speed, you will more or less have difficulty power sliding those corners. Power sliding is not only applied when you need to turn. In fact, you will find yourself doing it 90% of the whole race. More on this later, once we talk about reserve system and fire maintenance holding the opposite direction from where your character is facing while power sliding will allow you to do it in straight paths the lesser the turn stat the easier it is to power slide in straight lines so how is it how is this done exactly for example when you power slide while your character is facing to the left then you hold the opposite direction which is right so the best example for this is when you race in at your skyway, you remember there's a straight path there before the finish line. And in Tiger Temple, where there are flames trying to burn you there. So if you use speed, if you use speed, 
you will find it easier to chain two to three. If not if not three, then just two. Two chain boosts in one power slide. Whereas if we go for a turn, which is the lower extremity, um, you will only be able to get in a maximum of one boost. So if you're using turn, what you need to do is constantly switch power sliding. So just so power slide to the left and then do a single boost and then switch to the right. Switch to, switch to power sliding to the right which is done by jumping again and then holding right and then boost again and then jump again, face left, boost again, etc. So next let's have turbo boosting. So turbo boosting is done by pressing the other designated jump button while power sliding. So what does this mean? So for DS4, DualShock 4, and if you are using the default controller layout, R1 and L1 will be your jump buttons. And if you are using the R1 as the means to power slide, that means you are holding it, then L1 will be the button that you will use for turbo boosting. So there are a total of three indicators of when to hit the turbo boost trigger. The gauge located at the lower right of your screen, which is this, if you are using the nitro nitro gauge, you can switch to the classic ones, which is the speedometer or to just the classic gauge, which is being which which gets filled from right to left, from green to red. And then you have the smoke behind your cart. Yes, that is also an indicator. You can use that as an indicator if you don't want to look at the lower right corner of your screen once you see the smoke getting darker then you can trigger a turbo boost and then last we have the nitro wheels but you must have the option turned on so when you power slide you will notice that the wheels you will notice the wheels of your cart glowing and from and it glows from the outer perimeter to the inner perimeter like this the longer you hold the power slide button. If you are using the nitro fuel gauge, which is what I recommend, you'll see that you may get fail, good, or perfect boost. You should always aim to get perfect, which is to be discussed more on why, once we are in the reserve system. Only resort to good if you have to make a tighter turn. So, based on the nitro fuel gauge, if you see your gauge being filled around this area, around this area up until this area where my mouse is hovering at, you will get a fail boost and that's a big no-no. You won't get anything out of it. You won't get a boost, you won't get any reserves. And then in between these two lines, you will get good. It's fine, but as much as possible, we should aim for getting perfect. Wait, actually, uh, good is good should be minimal. Getting good perfect boost should be minimal. It's not totally fine. You should always aim to get perfect boost, which is done by pressing the turbo boost, the other jump button while power sliding. Once you see the gauge filling around here, basically you have to wait until it's almost full. You get the most out of it when you get perfect boost okay then you can chain three turbo boosts in a single power slide you are free to cut it to just one or two turbo boosts and do another power slide if you are to crash to a wall like similar to how i discussed it in either skyway and tiger temple straight paths where if you are going to fall or if you are going to bump towards a wall then just switch power sliding and then just do a single turbo boost then switch again so if you are if you want to look to the nitro wheels then basically it's just if you want to get a perfect boost there then you let the light glow to the inner perimeter as much as possible okay
Ah, the types of fire. So I have trimmed this down into three types. I believe there is still something in between level 3 turbo fire and sacred fire. But you get that by getting a really long air time without SF coming out from your exhaust system. You will rarely encounter it. So anyway, level 3 turbo fire. This is the fire that you get on your third chain boost. These are medium sized yellow orange in color. So for a better image, to, for, to make it easier for you to remember, I have an image here. The first one. This is how a level 3 turbo fire looks like. And then next, we have circuit fire. This is the fire that you get from most turbo pads and from wooden ramps. Larger than level 3 turbo fire and these are more yellow. And of course, faster. Much faster than level 3 turbo fire. So this is how a sacred fire looks like when you get it. And there are tracks that we call sacred fire tracks because we can only get... Because that's the only fire... Fastest fire that we can get on those tracks, such as Crash Cove, Tiger Temple, Papa's Pyramid, Coco Park, Inferno Island, mm, etc. And then finally, we have the blue fire. So, bluish white in color, very distinctive. So, this is how a blue fire looks like. So, it is, it is the fastest fire that you can get in a game. But, 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 it varies in speed to in certain tracks. Examples would be Deep Sea Driving and Twilight Tour. So, in Deep Sea Driving, the blue fire that you get from the very first turbo pad, just after the starting line, finish line, is a faster blue fire than the ones that you get after the Kraken. And you can try it yourself by letting hit with a Kraken or letting yourself get hit by an item. You will still get a blue fire after the Kraken, but it is slower. And then Twilight Tour. You get a blue fire from the ramp just before Aladdin. Like basically, be, basically, be, basically the ramp where you see the character which is carrying a bunch of Wumpa fruit crates, and you also get a blue fire after the wooden ramp, which is after the shortcut in Twilight Tour, just before, around before the finish line. So there's a wooden ramp there, which where you will jump. And then there's a blue fire pad there which will give you a much, much faster blue fire speed than the previous one that I talked about. And then if you really want to notice it significantly, then you can try Ring Rally. In Ring Rally, you get blue fire around 7 lap, I believe. 7 lap. And then as you go on, as you, as you, as you are able to finish more laps... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you will notice that you are going much, much faster even though you still have the same blue fire behind you. Ah, now things are starting to get a little bit more technical. Reserves and fire maintenance. So the reserve system is a hidden gauge which determines how long you will be able to keep your level 3 turbo fire, sacred fire, or blue fire going. So if you have already watched replace time trial replace against oxide velo or even the developer times then you might be wondering how those players can keep blue fire behind them going for the whole three laps then this is the reason behind it reserve system so you get reserves by turbo boosting passing through a turbo pad long air time and using items such as the turbo canister the significance of power sliding and turbo boosting comes here since you don't always have access to the other options like for example, you don't always have access to the turbo pads. And this is what I'm referring to earlier when I said that you will be you will see yourself power sliding 90% or 95% throughout the whole race. Because you will need to maintain your fire, maintain your reserves by constantly power sliding and turbo boosting throughout the whole track. To get the near maximum amount of reserves from turbo boosting get perfect every time which is by letting the fire letting letting the gauge fill up to this point and beyond get perfect every time you boost or let it fill to the fullest if possible you get more reserves this way so if you are still losing your fire despite getting reserves despite despite getting perfect every time then 
my next advice would be try to let it feel as much as possible like what is shown in the picture there's a difference between letting it feel up to this point and to just this point okay avoid scraping walls by jumping multiple times mixing power sliding with jump or by ultra turn ultra turn will be discussing in the next few slides and that is about it for reserves and fire maintenance Next, we are going to talk about the significance of airtime. Do we jump earlier or later, or just power slide through the air? So based on the game's tutorial, jumping at the peak of bumps or ramps is best that it allows you to attain maximum height. That means longer airtime too. While it is true, it is not applicable to all as more airtime means you are going much slower. This is notable in Dingo Canyon's Road with Water. So in that terrain with water, if you choose to jump between the road puddles there you can jump there we're going to go at a much slower pace and that means you will be consuming more time traversing that particular road whereas you can just jump in between them which is much much faster so airtime is not the best way to get reserves boost too in certain cases like in tiny arena a track with a lot of bumps power sliding and turbo boosting through them is the best way to gain reserves so you can test it out yourself Basically, you can't really rely on you can't really rely on airtime as the main way to maintain your fire. Power sliding and turbo boosting is the best way. It's a general rule you only need to jump at the peak of a ramp or bump if you're going through a shortcut. Example for this is the shortcut in Bitter Bluff before the fence cut. One behind the house or ho home. And then the Hatter Skyway Cloud Cut. It's advisable that you jump at the peak and super speedway too so how do you maximize your jump you can maximize it by waiting until your rear wheels has passed through the ramp and then pressing the jump button you can notice it in visual bluff if you feel the need to get more reserves you can always choose to turbo boost after a big jump like for example in the the big jump bef the big jump before the finish line in clockwork wompa Feel that you need more reserves to maintain blue fire in clockwork Wumpa, then on the blue fire pad there don't jump just keep on power sliding until you go down you can probably sneak in to boost there two perfect boosts that will give you a lot of reserves already and uh, now we are in the advanced techniques so ultra turn one of the most significant techniques in the game the ultra turn is a very useful technique as it allows every driving style to make a sharp turn while maintaining your fire. So this is the technique that allows the speed driving style to be dominant out of all the five. So it can be done by three methods. Quick ultra turn, long ultra turn, and grounded ultra turn. So what is quick ultra turn? So it is done by releasing acceleration then pressing brake, reverse, jump, left or right button for a brief moment to make a sharp turn. So like what it like what is being shown on the controller here. Although here I'm pressing left. Just left or right, doesn't matter. Depends on your needs. Then best example for the quick ultra turn is the sharp spiral section in Papo's Pyramid when you're using speed drift or even axle. Then next we have the long ultra turn, which is done by letting go of acceleration and then holding brake reverse left right and then pressing jump multiple times so long ultra turn you basically you'll basically do this when you are going through the spiral section in dragon mines because you will always hit the wall there or lose your fire if you do it by just power sliding or just trying to break normally then next we have the grounded ultra turn so same as long ultra turn with the exception that you will not be pressing the jump button. This one in particular is very very useful in turbo track as it allows you to save more time rather than doing long ultra turn. But both are viable, it's just that grounded ultra turn is much much faster if you want to get a faster time in turbo track. And then next we have air brake. So this is done by holding the brake, reverse, and left or right buttons after jumping. So this is most used in Hatter Skyway shortcut before the finish line. And on that path in Cortex Castle where 
it divides into two, just after the first spider. And then next we have hopping. It is the act of jumping multiple times at a certain path without power sliding. So just keep on pressing the jump button at a specific rhythm. Useful for cutting mud, grass, water. This is most notable in the grass shortcuts of Papa's Pyramid, Tiger Temple, and Coco Park if, if I may add, and the cart mine shortcut in Dragon Mines. Hopping minimizes the slowdown on your cart. The quicker you pass through something is equal to the more reserves you save and the more time you save. Alright, next let's discuss optimal racing lines, wall hugging, and corner cutting. So the general idea here is that you want to take the shortest distance from point A to point B. Speed driving style trumps in this as it can power slide straight and this is where ultra turn shines. So it's kind of difficult to discuss this topic with just words. So I'll be using some examples. The first one, the first figure is taken from Gingerbread Joyride before the shortcut. And then the second figure is the map from Crash Cove. So first let's analyze the Gingerbread Joyride figure. So here, from starting line, these are the legends. Uh, the brown brown color indicates the starting line, which is here. Blue one indicates the roadmap on where to power slide, turbo boost. And then the green one indicates turbo pads. And then black one indicates walls. So beginning from starting line, of course, you would want to take the turbo pad to get SF really early. Then next, here. So let's take this particular section. Let's cut it here rectangle so you might ask wall hugging by wall hugging so doesn't that mean you have to go here from this circle or range hug the wall here and then go through here or from here to the left and then down no absolutely no no because you are traveling more distance that way like what i said take this section rectangle Let's pass through a straight line at the at this section of the rectangle. So now you have two triangles. Then let's remove one triangle. You have now you have a right triangle. So let's say that this side is A, side A, and then this side is B. And then the third one, the slant line is side C. So with that, and taking Pythagorean's theorem into account. Side C will always be shorter than side A and B combined. You can compute for it. Like for example, let's say this particular side here as 3 meters. As an example, 3 meters and then this side here as 5 meters. So going by the theorem, uh, so side A equals 3. So A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So that means 3 squared plus 5 squared is equal to C squared. You have to determine C. Mm, 9 plus... Wait a bit. No, no, no. Let's set this example as 4. Or rather, not 5. So side B is 4. So 3 squared plus 4 squared equals... 25. 25. And so we must find side C. So we gotta take the square root of 25, which is 5. There you go. A plus B, 3 plus 4 equals 7. And then the slant line is 5. Shorter. And that's why you need to take this path instead. Instead of going through here and trying to wall hug. And then we can go for another example. Another instance. Let's remove the turbo pad here. Let's remove the turbo pad here for example. So from the starting line... There is no longer you have no reason to go there so instead 
you'll start wall hugging around here. So from starting line, wall hug around here, wall hug around here, and then go straight here. All right. And then next we have the map for Crash Cove. Let's focus on this curve right here. For this curve right here, where Dingodal's, where Dingodal's icon is at, shortest distance to take Shortest distance to travel this particular section is by hugging the wall here alongside this map. Why not here? Why not here? I mean, by method of inspection, by method of observation, it's very clear that if you take this path right here, then you will be traveling more distance than this. Or if you want to, then you can use two circles. With different rad dice as an example and you can compute for the perimeter by 2 pi r set r as radius and then let's say the other circle has 2 meters radius and then the other one has 4 meters radius then obviously the one with a greater radius will have more distance for example if we have just an example, okay? For example, if we have the center of the circle right here and then this measures 2 meters, then obviously this will be shorter. Meanwhile, if you take radius as 4 meters, so from here, 4 meters here, more distance traveled. Yeah, so more or less you can determine the optimal racing lines by just inspecting the map. Ah, finally, we are at the final section. Last topic we need to discuss for this guide, how to use items. So first and foremost, try to get to 10 Wumpa Fruits as soon as possible. Not only you will get upgraded or juiced up items, but also you will benefit from the additional 2% speed boost for your cart. That's really really good. Traps, bigger TNT Nitro in general should be placed in blind spots, target paths, small lane width, ramps, or predicted racing line of the racer behind you. Can also be used to block bombs and missiles. Also, if you don't re if you don't have a powered up beaker yet, you still have the green beaker, then you can place it on turbo ramps, turbo pads, because they tend to blend or camouflage with the turbo pad, and a lot of racers get hit by it, especially if they are not prepared. Beakers can be thrown forward by holding up of the pad or analog stick before pressing the use item button, using to snipe a racer ahead of you. And then bombs can be rolled backwards by holding down before pressing use item. Use this if the racer is taking the same lines as you or both of you are in a small width lane. Example, hyperspace way or like the one in Tiger, Tiger Temple. Or there's another way, you can roll the bombs forward. Like if you predict, if there's an upcoming turn path ahead of you and of course the one the one in front of you has no other way has no other way to take it but to turn, right? So you can predict where he's going to where he's going to move and roll the bomb ahead. So that once the bomb reaches that area it will intersect with the racer in front of you and bam, hit him. So use missiles in wide or straight lanes as these do not follow the target's racing line. So I'm sure you've already experienced a lot of missile shenanigans. Like, like sure, they are... They can surely... No, not surely. They, can, they are targeted. They are locked on towards the racer in front of you. But the thing with missiles is that they aren't wise enough they don't have the intelligence to follow their racing lines so you will find them you will find missiles to always be hitting the walls that's why my advice is to as much as possible try to use them in wide or straight lanes so we can truly hit the racer the next Power shields allow you to be invulnerable against items, so it is highly advisable to be juiced up early for permanent shield. So this can be used... This can shield you against any type of items, even mask, 
warp orb clocks even against the trains in android alley whereas if you use a mask there you will still get squeezed so power shields are the best in terms of protecting you so mask not only provide invulnerability for a limited time but it can also stun players who you bump into increases your speed so mask kind of similar to power shields except that they are limited whenever whether they are juiced up or not although i highly advise that before using your mask you have to be juiced up so that you can get the maximum benefit from the speed increase and these are really useful for cutting grass like in tiger temple or in papa's pyramid because you you can actually just keep on power sliding on that area and it basically cancels the slow the slowdown effect of the terrain also for power shields by the way um if you don't have juiced up wumpa fruit then you if you use it early the green shield it will be up by a limited amount of time oh next Warp Orbs. Warp Orbs by default just hit anyone who it passes by, but always hits the first placer. Just a Warp Orb, however, targets everyone in the race. So if you do get a Warp Orb, and if you are at the last place, 8th place or 7th place, try to be juiced up so that you can stun everyone ahead of you. The next. Lock stun all the other racers besides the user. Use it once you have seen them pass the blue fire or second fire turbo pad. Why? That will allow you to catch. That will allow you to catch against the other racers. Since, for example, let's say in Cortex Castle, the blue fire pad is around the big jump before the finish line, correct? And if you use a clock after that jump, then they will need to go throughout the whole track again before they can get the blue fire. And you will have one lap one whole lap to catch up to them next turbo canisters provide sf when juiced up take note of that just in case you get hit by an item midway or you scrape the wall so if you do get in if you do get hit by an item then just find a womp of fruit crate again then save your canister once you're juiced up use it so you can get sf again get back into the race Super Engine can provide tons of reserve for blue fire when you repeatedly press the acceleration button when you use it. This is a neat little trick ever since the Super Engine got added. It's, actually, if you do get the Super Engine and blue fire track, you can just... You, you can actually go for the whole race, for the whole 3 lap race, without turbo boosting anymore. As long as you use this... No, it's a bug or really a feature and then you can just focus on ultra turning and cutting corners hugging walls optimizing your racing lines and this will be the end of my guide so you may ask but where are the shortcuts where are the shortcuts like what i said before this guide discusses the basic fundamentals of the game so once you have mastered the topics that i covered in this everything will follow the shortcuts you will no longer have problems taking the shortcuts. But anyway, I will still attach a link in this video's description for all the shortcuts locations in CTRNF. Anyway, so if you have learned anything, even just one new thing from this guide, from this video, then please do let me know in the comment section. I really appreciate it. If you like it, then hit that like button. If you have any comments, just let me know whether if it's something that I missed or something that you need clarification on. Just let me know. I will be willing to answer. So that will be it. If you like my content, please do subscribe. I stream from time to time and I also make guys from time to time. So, see ya guys.